Why don't we get, uh, get going here? I'll call the meeting to order and good afternoon and welcome to the April 25th, 2024 meeting of the Fitchburg Historical Commission. Um, please be advised that FATV is, is conducting an audio and video recording of this meeting and for rebroadcast. Um, I see we have no guests and um, Commission members here with me are Ellen D. Geronimo, uh, Don Ostrowski, Andy Lepasti, and my name is Keith Cheno, and I'm the chair of the commission. Uh, we have one guest, and uh, Mary Beth, welcome to our meeting. And we'll get to you very shortly here, so just a little bit of uh, front work here. Um, our agenda, public comment period. Um, I see and we've received none. Uh, moving on to item number two, review and approve minutes to the March 28th, 2024 meeting. A um, couple hours ago, I sent out a, an email with a couple suggestions for amendment, a couple minor, minor things. Um, Look at my computer today. <laughs> okay. I say, Barbara, if you might want to repeat what those. Uh, sure, let me just. Um, see what I said here. Uh, my suggestion was in item number four, the second paragraph next to the last sentence might read, um, let's see, Don replied that the new design seemed appropriate and helped us understand the removal of the street side stone wall. Um, he was kind of referring to um, uh, waiving a requirement, and as we have no requirements yet, that there wasn't any waiving of requirements, as, as noted in the minutes. So. Yep. Uh, and the second one, uh, number seven, and it's and it says last sentence change. It is number seven. I can't remember what it is number seven. But they don't find the parts of this. Yeah, and uh, he was hoping he would come to this meeting, the April meeting, instead of the May meeting. Uh, James may join us later on or not, so I I've, I've emailed him and invited him again. So maybe he'll come to the May meeting if, if he is, doesn't show up later. And those are the two suggestions I'd add for you. What do you have on seven again? Quick. Uh, seven change. Uh, the last sentence in, in number seven, change May to April. Oh, yes. Uh, noted he will try to make it to our April meeting. Yeah, that's true. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I was convoluted in my reply. Got it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, any other Thoughts or comments on minutes? I move that we accept the minutes of the March 28th, 2024 meeting of meeting minutes and um, as amended. Revised. Or as amended. <laughs> okay. A second? A second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. So moved. Okay. Moving on to item number three. Uh, our guest is Mary Beth McKenzie, and um, Mary Beth, if you'd like to uh, uh, introduce yourself, and, and uh, thank you for, for joining us. Yes. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, Keith, thank you very much for the invitation to be here today. Um, as Keith mentioned, I'm Mary Beth McKenzie. I'm the Associate Vice President for Finance and Administration here at Fitchburg State University. Um, and Keith has invited us to, and the timing is very propitious in that uh, to talk a little bit about the theater project and some updates in relationship to that project. 
Um, so, uh, Keith, I don't unfortunately have any pictures to show at the moment because we are um, kind of in the midst of a regroup. Um, but what I would like to share with folks is that um, about a year ago, uh, we finished the design, um, which at that point in time um, identified kind of a three phase piece, second phase being the building an addition um, beside the theater, which would have been a black box addition. And then the third phase would be the historic theater. Um, after we received our pricing and understood where we were at financially, um, we took a pause last fall to regroup um, and reassess if there were other better opportunities that we might um, explore um, to find a solution that could be more feasible um, to move the project forward. Um, we have, with the assistance of an external or another consultant that we brought to the team, um, re or re shuffling our approach um, with the intent to actually build a black box within the within the theater building. Um, uh -huh. So we are going to eliminate the addition. Um, and so I want to talk just briefly about what that would be. Um, we are going to use what would have been um, the mezzanine, what used to be the mezzanine um, or the balcony seating. Um, and in that area of the theater um, space, we will build that black box. Um, and that will also be inclusive of um, some um, of the technical theater. So we're figuring out what kind of grid will be available to support the lighting, things of that nature. Um, and we are um, also looking at, you know, uh, creating new dressing rooms, green room, et cetera, um, and mechanical services for that portion of the building. Um, that will do a couple of things. One, um, we will um, invest earlier um, than planned in terms of being able to reactivate um, the entry to the building um, and the lobby area um, as well. Um, and we will also be accelerating um, repairs to the envelope of the building. Um, and so currently we are in design with the um, a roof replacement and masonry repairs that will encompass the rear and two sides of the building, um, essentially accomplishing stabilization um, of the building, um, retaining the somewhat limited but historical features um, from the exterior that will, and that will be subject through review through Mass Historic as well. Um, and then, um, and we're expecting to do that work um, starting at the end of this calendar year and continuing into um, 2025. Um, and then that work would be followed by the construction of that black box. Um, and again, so that would um, re, re, reopen the, um, and reestablish the historic marquee. Um, the, the entrance to the theater um, would continue to be at the historic theater entrance, um, reactivate a lobby area space, and then the black box space. Um, the last phase would still be a phase three, um, and it, what we will do is um, the historic um, stage, proscenium, um, orchestra pit, those things will be um, left in place um, for a phase three renovation in the future. So those features will continue to be retained and be able to be updated um, as, um, you know, as the project continues to advance. Um, but I, we anticipate construction would start um, in 2026 um, for the black box. Um, so we'll be making some improvements um, for the black box and lobby space that would include and ensure accessibility um, as well um, and uh, making sure that all of our community members are able to use our facility. Uh, so that's the short version um, of where we are currently at um, with this. Um, we will continue um, to um, improve the exterior um, in, in compliance and consistent with um, historical standards. 
um, um, under the um, guidance and acceptance of uh, Mass Historic. Um, the one thing I would share um, that's a little bit different uh, as part of the departure, we are no longer going to be um, pursuing uh, historic tax credits at this point in time. Uh, again, that could change as things advance, but um, for the immediate future with the um, exterior repairs um, in the black box, we are not anticipating using any tax credits for that purpose. I would certainly welcome any questions if there are any. So as I understand, the black box is where the mezzanine was or is now, so yes. it, would be up. it would be up above the main floor of the theater. It'll actually use the volume of both the entry level um, that would sit under or where below um, mm -hmm. the mezzanine and into the mezzanine area. So right now below the mezzanine is, um, uh, well, I wouldn't use them, but um, mm -hmm. um, some of the technical spaces and support spaces. So those will be eliminated in order to create that lobby and then the black box area that'll sit below and go through the full volume of the, um, where the mezzanine would, would have sat. And, and do you have um, any estimate of the dimensions of what that black box will be? Um, I should, but I don't at my fingertips. Um, it is, um, so it'll take a little less than kind of, I'm trying to think of the whole theater volume, it'll take less than half between the lobby and the black box and leave about a half the space then for the phase three, third third phase of the renovation with the historic stage. Um, and I don't have a volume. We're anticipating that it would accommodate about 150 um, guests um, within the black box, um, depending of course on the staging setup. Um, for those of you that are familiar with the black box, it literally is a very black blank slate. Um, and then a set is you know, included, seating is included based on the, you know, design of the director um, and producers. Um, so that would um, be available both for theatrical performances um, from the university, as well as other performances, um, and obviously involve community use as well. So that is the plan. Okay, well, you basically answered my question. Very good. I, I wondered, uh, how many people are we accommodating? Yeah. Yes, thank you. Well, that that thank you for the update. It sounds like a uh, certainly a, a progressive uh, way of, of approaching it and providing uh, you know on, on a reasonable time frame of stabilizing the building uh, beyond what you you know you've done a lot of work so far and being able to. Um, Make use of of the building in in this uh, kind of three phased uh, fashion. So, and you know, community access to it, and certainly the university's theater and uh, community theater would have access to it. And I think, and we hear a lot about theaters con uh, converting to the uh, the more versatile black box uh, way of doing things. And it's uh, it'd be great to have something like that on Main Street. And the phase three is still having the proscenium theater, uh, perhaps with a little bit less seating, but uh, the ability to have full stage uh, loft type of uh, scenery types of uh, uh, Accommodation. accommodations, more of a two dimensional yeah. theater right. than the black box kind of concept, but the tra traditional theater that we all know. So. Great. Uh, any other questions from members here? Or? Well, I just uh, wanted to mention that on, in the phase three, if you are looking at possibly getting tax credits uh, the, and, and having the historical commission support, uh, uh, someone might look into the history of the theater there, um, including uh, when it may sound strange, but what movies were shown and when? I mean, this, this uh, movie aficionados 
uh, find this kind of information uh, really uh, fascinating and uh, and and events uh, associated. I mean, it doesn't it, it uh, would help to maintain the historical heritage of Fitchburg uh, because at what one point <laughs> Fitchburg was the go-to place for North Central Massachusetts. It was the cultural center of North Central Massachusetts. And the theater right across the street, that was one of the centers right there. Yes, we do. Um, we have, a, actually, we're working with the uh, a historical consultant um, and uh, to help also advance um, because the theater is not, could not be recognized as a single um standalone historic um building um continuing the work with the historic district um and that same consultant is working with us to um document um some of that history um and make sure that that information is captured both as part of the historic district as well yes thank you i just don't want that history to be lost yeah um that you know we we uh you know, from, I guess, the city standpoint and from our commission anyhow, we appreciate the university uh, backing the uh, Upper Common Historic District nomination. And we think that's, that, is, that is going to be a very important contribution uh, that the university is sharing with the city. And uh, I, I think uh, uh, it, it's going to affect a lot of things in, in this end of uh, Main Street. And so it's very important, and we appreciate the uh, guidance and example that you and, and your team has put into that. So that, that's great. Um, was there ever a vaudeville, or was there ever an organ in the, the theater itself? Yeah, those... It was, and there is in the... The uh, space where the organ and the pipe resided uh, continues. There's a, the grill that was there is still there. Um, yeah. And the university has actually obtained a pipe organ, um, and it is currently in storage um, that was donated to us that um, will be used as part of that renovation when we get to that phase three stage. So we do, we do actually have one. <laughs> Terrific. Are you also going to keep the boxes where you know people could, or where people could sit away from you know the actual theater? I think there's some boxes on either side, as I recall. Um, I don't recall that being the case in the interior at this point in time. Mm -hmm. um, I, mean, but I, I think I remember that. Yeah, it, there aren't there. They aren't there anymore. So we would have to look at either we, you know, um, uh -huh. look at any drawings or pictures that we have um, to determine, you know, what would be, um, what we would return that that seating area back to. Great. Okay. Other comments or questions? Is, is there any uh, discussion of this project on the university website that uh, people can look at? Um, we should be in, in the coming weeks, um, and again, this is relatively hot off the presses, um, in the coming weeks, there should be some more material that will be coming forward um, related to this change of direction. Um, I believe we'll be having some things both on the website. Um, I think some things will be coming out in the Fitchburg Sentinel and Enterprise, um, and we'll be doing some follow-up with the mayor's office as well um, and other um, representatives um, for the area with some up sh talking about the update to these plans. Um, and we are advancing the design um, for the black box. And hopefully, I would anticipate sometime in the next few weeks or um, by early June, we may have some plans that we would be able to kind of share that give us a better sense of what, what this re-envisioning will look like. Um, um, and uh, be able to share that, but uh, I will. I anticipate that that will be coming very, very soon to a theater and hear you. Great, thanks. <laughs> really enjoy it. Very good. Thank you very much, Mary Beth, and we appreciate your time for the update. Thank, Thank you, you for the invitation. Have a okay. wonderful afternoon. Thank Great. you. Thank you. Take care. Okay. Um,
Well, that sounds good. And it, it's great that the uh, they're continuing with the nomination for the Upper Common uh, Historic District. Um, received, and I think I shared some of the latest drafts with, with the members and about a month ago, maybe. And if not, I will resend it out again, if you'd like. Which is the, the nomination papers. It's about a 70 to 100 page document of, uh, of uh, nomination process that goes all the way from uh, School Street and the School Street mm -hmm. School down to include the library. So this whole chunk of Main mm -hmm. Street, including this building and on down to the library. So if you want to take a look at that draft, I can uh, send you a copy of that too. That would be good. Yes, if you send it again, I don't remember the data file. Again, which but, um, and I'm, I'm, uh, if you have a chance to take a look at it, it it's got a lot of information in it. I'm making a list of suggested uh, amendments or corrections to it, along with uh, Mass Historical uh -huh. looking at it also. Uh, maybe I could print out a copy for you too. It's easier to read that way. So that would be nice. It, it's a, uh, very interesting. A lot of a lot of good information on it. We just want to make sure that when it goes through, it, it's kind of an update on some of the histories of the building. I I I can remember going there when I was younger. There was also another theater next door called the Lyric, mm -hmm. and um, but the the Fishburne Theater was beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because well, Obviously, before you played the simultaneous, yeah, went to a, a movie in Pittsburgh. It was about the Cassius Clay Sunday Bus in 1964. Yeah. Oh. Um, so I, I was just assuming it was this theater, but it was the other one. I don't know. Was it this? Not the later Those, yeah. Don is referring to um, the uh, activity of the we have uh, chess clubs here in Fitchburg and historically uh, strong showings, et cetera. And that uh, Bobby Fisher, a U.S. champion oh, chess player, uh, had visited Fitchburg. And uh, if you've seen the, the serial Queens again, but, uh, <laughs> he played multiple uh, against many Fitchburg chess club members simultaneously at 56, one. 56. How many? 56. 56 games going on where mm -hmm. uh, against 56 other local players probably came in. 49. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so amazing statistics of uh, personalities who've uh, been guests in our city. So. Yeah, I think there is, if we can have a pie in the common, in the common college, you never get a speech. Yeah. <laughs> we have something indicating. <laughs> yes, Bobby Fisher did was simultaneous. Yeah, yeah Bobby exactly. Fisher visited a movie here. Um, sure, all, all of those things are you know, great pieces of our uh, city's heritage. So, uh, big and small. Okay, moving on to uh, number four activities for May Preservation Month and the brochure release. Um, the uh, historic areas in downtown Fitchburg brochure that we've been working on uh, is in its last edit, I hope, and uh, should be ready for the printer for uh, printing and release at um, uh, during May and hopefully at our May 23rd to celebrate Fitchburg's historic preservation event. Um, so just a little bit of a, a follow-up on the May event. Um, and to let you and the public know is that the, 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 the mayor is going to make a proclamation uh, to the city um, 
uh, in such that the city of Pittsburgh is going as and her proclamation is to declare uh, May as Pittsburgh's preservation, historic preservation month. And um, I have a draft of the proclamation with uh, some write ups and stuff that these corrections have been made. Uh, so the mayor's asked if uh, there's a time where we think that this might be a good appropriate time to release this proclamation when it should be dated. We do it on May 1st or any time before that. Um, and what type of uh, setting we might want mm -hmm. to have for them. Okay, it might be nice. Out the scroll and, yeah, it might be nice to do it week, week before. Okay, you next know, week. <laughs> or this week. Next week, I'd say. Um, and um, how would we want to, uh, would we like some coverage of that and how would we do that? So we have five days to figure this out. Oh, oh. Um, does the proclamation state the whole month of May is preservation month? Yes. Uh, and it and it will be a sea visit. Yeah, this is this is kind of rest. No, it works in the south southern back of it. Yeah. So that's pretty much of it. It's it's uh, um which, which is great. And it's going to be a kickoff for our um uh, May 23rd event, which is celebrate Pittsburgh's historic preservation uh, event. And we are creating a uh historical society. One of our partners in this is uh, maybe here's some copies of the draft of the uh, poster that we're proposing. Thank you. Um, and it's great that the Historical Society has, has uh, volunteered their graphics. A volunteer kind of help with this, and it basically um, re reinvests in the historic resources, celebrates resilient neighborhoods that promote the reuse of existing infrastructure, and support areas for that are walkable, energy efficient, and enhance community uh, livability, and celebrate the importance of historic preservation to Pittsburgh urban revitalization. And you think you could um, fit in the fact that there are six historic districts? Uh, that'll be a, that'll be a or just the brochure release on it. Yeah. Okay. Um, All right. Sorry. Yeah, and that'll be a separate part of, of the actual ceremony so, that we have on the twenty the twenty third. So, right. Um, and I, I spoke to you about Jim McGovern. I I have a call into him. He hasn't called me back. So okay. I'll call. A lot here tomorrow. Um, you know, he he might be interested in participating. Yeah, and and again, um, any any final kind of input? Uh, we we you know, the sponsors are obviously our commission, the historical society, uh, basically all city agencies. Uh, including uh, community development and economic development, uh, the mayor, um, and uh, in town Fitchburg, uh, the Fitchburg Cultural Alliance, the Fitchburg Redevelopment Authority. We're all kind of working together to uh, uh, make you know support this historic preservation month. And new view. And uh, new view is being added to this along with the uh, the hidden treasures uh, with the Freedom's Way. Uh, we're, we're trying to have this an event advertised on the Freedom's Way uh, May historic treasures, hidden treasures 
events that they have every year also. So we've added their uh, logo in there too. So who heads that up? Keith, you know? Um it's same there. Hello, how are you? Um it, it's like a national parks organization. Oh. Mm -hmm. So the, the Freedom's Trail is uh and it all is a Freedom's Trail. It basically starts in maybe Boston or Concord, Lexington. Lexington and Concord. And, you know, and, and heads Does out this way. And, and heads, you know, so it's like 900 some square miles of <laughs> space. And obviously, Mitch Burke's included in it. And, and, uh, we've had events in the past to, um, that the cities have been involved with, or this historical society. And we thought we would have that. Uh, maybe something that I could put that up on. Well, so on my. I'll send you a final copy. This okay, is a cool. draft, and uh, we have all of our sponsors. Not quite on there. Yet. So, so I'll I'll have the pictures. The buildings. Those. Where me? How the buildings were chosen. Um, these were the ones that would kind of fit, but some of them just kind of showing buildings that are in reuse or uh, kind of from one end of the main street to the other. Um, there's obviously a lot of neighborhood residential buildings that have a lot of great preservation on them also that uh, just didn't make it onto the, this particular poster. I wonder about brand placement. The which? Brand placement. Mm, yeah. yeah. Which, which lounge or something? Yeah, Mama's Lounge. Yeah. The what? Mama's Lounge, the uh, restaurant. Oh. Um, so, it, it's, you know, it's an activity that's fairly new downtown and picking one or another. Uh, do you think that's controversial or? No, I just, I just wonder, you know, if anybody, well, you know, it, it's, it becomes it's probably not an issue for us. This is yeah. It goes into it up to other contexts. Yeah, you know, if you have, I don't know. Yeah. Um, the fake club would be nice. Yeah. Yeah. They have that. I I think. Um, You know, a mixture of you know, cultures and diversity and, and uses I thought would be interesting and for one justification, I guess, uh, mm -hmm. or, um, which we're maybe missing a little bit in our question. So, um, so anyhow, that, any other thoughts you have, let me know soon. And um, You know, this is kind of the you know, pictures we had, and the, the graphic artists kind of pulled these and pushed them in there to see how it worked. So we thought they have some pictures and enough room for some words and the sponsors. And, and I don't know who all is going to see this, probably not a lot of people. So how to, how to put this out? I don't know if we can get a baby TV to put it on their calendar or other calendars. Oh, I'm or if we can, if the city has a like a Facebook page or some other media piece that um, we can put this on to also. Um, others are more connected to social media than. Um, so if you have any suggestions on that, uh, let me know. We need some voices in here. Okay, uh, so that's the. Um, and I have a, I'd like some input on a kind of the program for the 23rd. Mm -hmm. um, I created a, a program. I think I sent it out. You could copy everybody on it. another email I sent to Mass Historical Commission. Again, that was earlier this morning, so you might not have had time to take a look at it. Yes. Um, Where would you want um, Tim McGovern? Uh, if he shows? Yeah, I, I, I've got, I called his office yeah, and yeah. asked if, if he could call me. Yeah. And, well, um, let's, let's go 
Let's do a quick review okay, through this, sure, sure. and and then you can make a suggestion on mm -hmm. that. We we have um, so so the intention this this program is going to be held in the legislative chamber, so there's kind of enough room for seating, and it can be uh, broadcast or mm -hmm. broadcast by FATV, so that you know we're reaching more people rather than just ourselves and those who show up to make the presentation. Um, so that's a, that's a good you know, recording spot, and it could hold a certainly a bigger crowd than this, and it's right off the street. Um, so uh, thinking of starting off with an introduction, uh, perhaps the mayor uh, introducing the and, and kind of kicking off the event, mm -hmm. uh, and a welcome and who we are, uh, the people, the the sponsors of this or the organizers of this, which are. On the, Closer. So, Historical Commission, Historical Society, uh, Community Development and Economic Development, uh, In Town, Redevelopment Authority, Cultural Alliance, New View, and Freedom's Trail. Um, just a quick recognition of uh, kind of the joint effort of this. Um, Again, this is just a draft I put together. I, I think it would be best if we could do all of this in an hour's time. Um, <laughs> So if you, yeah, I tend to make things too long. Uh, so if we need to cut and slash, we can do that too. Um, next, a, just kind of a brief history of the city uh, for kind of those watching. And I thought maybe someone from the Historical Society might be a good presentation of that. Uh, and, and really just a couple minutes and there could be a couple slides or something like that happening in the background. You know, the early settlers and the first meeting house or whatever it is, the importance of the Nashua River to the development of the city, mm -hmm. uh, the railroad, uh, the river, the industrialization, uh, uh, the, the power of, of immigrants uh, and different uh, cultures coming to the city, uh, uh, to the heydays, to the the commerce of downtown to the residential areas uh, and kind of the institutions that made the city what it is and on up into today and uh, Ellen mentioned the the cleaning of the after the industrial revolution the cleaning of the natural river bringing it back to its uh, much more pristine uh, condition that it is now so a quick highlight on those things but not making it uh, the whole program. So hitting the highlights of what the city, so uh, someone watching uh, the program has a a, a good, good brief understanding and hopefully whet their appetite for uh, looking for more information in the history of the city. Um, following that history uh, by a uh, raising the importance of uh, why, why preserved uh, buildings and what it does for uh, preserving our community's heritage. Uh, maybe uh, this could be presented uh, by um, community development, economic development departments here in the city that have uh, training and experience of uh, you know, what we uh, would like and, and the potential of our our downtown and our various uh, sub-communities and neighborhoods that we have throughout the city. Um, and kind of the importance that uh, maintaining heritage and preservation of our, our buildings and infrastructure within the city and how that's important to our city and uh, other cities and maybe perhaps using examples of, of other cities that are similar to Fitchburg, like, like Mill Cities and things and how Preservation is uh, can yeah, enhance and uh, be a part of the uh, impetus to uh, great living conditions in, in cities like ours. But the heritage, the rich heritage that we can have. Um, part of this is that we could we could uh, show some uh, quick images of buildings that have been lost in Fitchburg. Uh, such as the depot, the Johnsonia, the Fitchburg Savings Bank, the big vacant spot across the street from City Hall here, the Lucy Helen Hospital, and kind of other quick, quick types of pieces to kind of reinforce uh, uh, what happens when we start removing uh, 
some of our assets like that. Well, the, the John Semley Act, absolutely. Yeah, and, and I think yeah. most people, if, if we can show some before and after or something, mm -hmm. and, and just just a quick uh, piece on this. Again, maybe we spent 10 minutes on this, uh, but with a good punch and some good image illustrations of uh, what other cities are doing, some befores and afters, and what, what some of the great resources we have in our city, um, and some of the things that we've, we've lost. Um, so kind of talking about we you know, we talked about our historic assets that we do have, and this I thought would maybe this is a good time to follow with the release of the brochure. So you know we would have copies available for those attending. We talk about the distribution where copies can be attained at the library and city hall, et cetera, um, and uh, also show um, on the screen large images of each of the panels uh, of the brochure uh, so that uh, the public can see what, what the brochure is and hopefully you can get a copy. And we will be posting a copy of it on our website also. And perhaps other agencies and historical society could post it also. So there's both the paper and the digital copy available. I thought maybe Ellen could be the presenter for this. Uh, certainly, um, you know, part of your idea, or we, you know, certainly your idea. And we've been working on this for a while now, so it would be great if you could help us present that. Um, we had talked about having um, kind of favorite buildings uh, throughout the city and getting. Uh, citizens of the uh, council. the city involved in perhaps through each you know, ward councilor. And the council is at large of having a, a uh, an outreach and a request for nominations or requests for um, each wards and neighborhoods uh, uh, from the citizens themselves for kind of meeting criteria of what uh, buildings they would like to nominate. Uh, we made it you know, reach out to uh, one of the counselors and, and unfortunately haven't heard back from them. And Ellen and I are hoping to contact maybe the uh, uh, a couple of them to make this happen. Uh, Megan Donahue has volunteered to create a, a Google um, nomination form. Okay. And um, Again, just so this could be all done online, perhaps either submitted to the uh, individual ward uh, counselors or submitted uh, to a central location like our, our to us here. And we could then post these along with an image of each of the different wards, uh, building buildings or multiple buildings that they would like to uh, uh, show as you know, examples of great preservation in their neighborhoods. Um, we kind of come up with some kind of criteria for that that we can review a little bit more. But uh, this again is trying to make this kind of broader than us just taking a day and a little television piece and nobody hears it. Uh, <laughs> and trying well, to this, put this, this out in a, this is very and, and we're 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 uh, we're a little bit behind in getting this to happen. And, uh, in the next uh, four weeks or something to happen. So still could happen. Uh, just need to get that out there and uh, trying to find the right connections for that. Um, so again, uh, uh, FATB said that they could have a large screen behind kind of the council seating. So that the screen darted up on the left that the speakers are in the front and maybe a large screen back behind so you're not looking left and right in the council chamber to see the images. So the images can be up there all the time while speakers are talking. Okay. So, and it would be on the TV uh, tape also. Um, from there, uh, I uh, emailed out to Mass Historical Commission if there is a representative that they would like to send to the event and perhaps make a comment about uh, uh, 
the historic preservation communities throughout Massachusetts and, and some insights that they can give on um, what other communities and the success of preservation and how it really enriches and, and uh, you know, increases property values, uh, makes communities more livable, et cetera. So um, I got a reply back from uh, our, our representative, uh, regional representative at MHC, and uh, she's going to uh, ask uh, who might be able to to join us on that day. So yeah. again, a, a five five minute presentation perhaps right. by right. Mass Historical Commission. Again, this might be a good time if uh, Jim McGovern, um, who's uh, certainly a backer of preservation, if, if Ellen has, has made a call and if um, he could join us maybe following this that Jim could make or previous to this mm -hmm. uh, mass historical representative making a, a small presentation. Um, something we could include here is some uh, information and data on preservation and energy efficiency. There's been a lot of recent studies in the last uh, 10, 20 years about uh, on climate change and the importance of preserving existing infrastructure and buildings. <laughs> Hang on a second. Sorry, that's We'll be finished hopefully with this in about a few minutes. So. And I could I could do that, or we could eliminate it. But we're running out of time, uh, but I think it's kind of an important part. Where everybody's thinking of energy pieces, and oh, global warming, and and some there's some good charts and things talking about retaining the embodied energy that's already in, already in the existing invested. buildings. Yeah. And uh, by tearing it down, you're just taking that previous energy that was spent on that building, taking it to the landfill and redoing it all over again. And all of that, the building materials and things cost, you know, uh, mountains of carbon emissions <laughs> to make those things happen again. So that's the upshot of it. So expanding it then. Um, nextly, uh, kind of informing the public about resources available to them. Uh, if you have older buildings or would like to have an older building, uh, finding out information about the history of the building. Obviously, the Pittsburgh Historical Society is a great archive of our community's uh, past heritage. Um, also, uh, our local community development, economic development, and the building department, the building commissioner, um, and the redevelopment authority uh, are all here to kind of help uh, people and development and responsible development happening here in the city. Um, we can also talk about the there's incentives to uh, maintaining and restoring uh, older buildings. There are actually 10% tax credits for just taking building or redoing a building that's over 30 years old. And then if there's if buildings are National Register registered buildings, there are uh, state uh, income tax credits, and there are also federal income tax credits for uh, projects and other incentives that are uh, made available through other state agencies for and building and restoring uh, areas, and particularly in downtown areas and close to our, our active train station, et cetera. Uh, so kind of showing those resources. Uh, some other resources, finding the history of older buildings, historical society, and um, publicizing uh, how to get to the map risk maps mm -hmm. uh, so that anybody online can find uh, that, and we can show that on a slide. On, up on the screen, uh, the website to go to. Um, and how to maintain, repair, and restore older properties, uh, the National Park Service preservation briefs. And again, that's all public access on their website. Uh, wealth of information, 
Uh, next, resources for preservation specialists, contractors, and craftspeople. Uh, there's a great directory of available resources, particularly for preservation, that uh, Preservation Massachusetts uh, has on their website. It's called the Preservation Directory. And we can post that website also. And then have open for questions and discussions. I could see this going in for two hours, and uh, uh, kind of our thoughts as we make this uh, pared down to have it so we're not keeping people longer than they would like to stay, but hopefully keeping their attention while they are there. So if you can um, take a look at this, this and is, this is wonderful. make any suggestions. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to have images up on the screen, kind of choreographed through the, the whole presentation as we're making this, so that there's there's images happening and websites yes. available. So people watching it as, as a recording on FA TV can pause it there and write it down if they want to. Um, and I don't know, maybe we can get um, local newspapers or any other local news outlets or to come participate in this also. I wonder if, if Charles would be able to help us, you know, with putting the program together so that, you know, it can be yeah. uh, carousel and carousel. Yeah, yeah. It'll probably be all digital images we'll put into a, a PowerPoint presentation right, or right. something like that. You want me to call him? Um, he, he is, I said he, he's working today, but uh, oh. I'll coordinate that okay. with him too. So. Yeah, and including the buildings that were lost, if you can include some of the residences, like the uh, the house on Prospect Street, Prospect Street, it was built in 1860, around 1860. It was um, John Parkhill residence. Who's that? Who's that? Is that the second building on the right? It's... Yeah, it's uh, it's now an empty lot, and they somebody bought it was renovating it, and the workmen did something. Oh, I hope it is. Oh, I hope it is. Yeah, yeah it looks how it probably is. Yeah, it, it may, maybe you two can work with the historical society see if you can get some images in that. Yeah, I haven't have any images. Okay. Did you say prospect. Good. Yeah, 19 prospects. Yeah, send it to me. Yeah, send, send it to me if you if you have it. Yeah, I will. I think it's going to have Yeah, the residential would be great. That's that's kind of missing in the list here. All right. Yeah, another building that we we could buy if we can get a picture on South Street. If we if it was oh, yes. the Putnam's house. Yes. It used to be. Um, Oh, school. Oh. What was the high school on South Street? Um, Notre Dame one? Notre Dame, yeah. yeah. That, that was the part of the mistake. Oh, yeah, right next to the school, right? Yeah. Just down below. Yeah. It. yeah, that's a beautiful um, yeah, it residence. Is. Is, that's still there, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's still there. there. Yeah. yeah, but it wasn't there a school at, uh, on Venus? Was it Venus Road? Really? Water Street. Oh, uh, the grammar school. Yeah, so where, where the uh, uh, dollar store. Yes, at. that that was uh, no. South Pittsburgh Grammar School. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it was. Yeah, we. And yeah. wonderful inside too. Yeah. Well, and, and um, well, Hospice School on South Street's still there. Yeah, uh, Simon Saw. <laughs> Interesting thing. Yes. <laughs> That's true. No witness. <laughs> well, there's a new building there with no windows, also. Oh, it's called the Amazon Warehouse. But, but, <laughs> but they're, they're, they're building, you know, the, the windowless factory. Yeah. That was such a big deal. I, I know I've told you that before. Yeah. You know, my son took me on a Sunday. <laughs> um, yeah. So if you, if you have images of anything like that, then so send them my way. Right now, I'm the collector of those images. So. Okay. Okay. Uh, and some more residential would be good to kind of flip in there to you know a few you know, a few seconds on each one of them to make a great impression of what we're talking about. Um, so, any other thoughts on the, our, our next meeting of the organization organizational meeting of this? 
And then you're, you're all encouraged to come to this. It's May 6th, Monday, May 6th at 1 p.m. in the North Meeting Room, okay. third floor here upstairs. May okay. what, please? May 6th, Monday, May 6th. Monday. Yeah, I was, when you mentioned the claim of the National Grid, um, I wonder if somehow the conjunction with not at this uh, May event, but in conjunction with it, somehow we could show the documentary on Mary and Star. Oh, sure. So that, I mean, it's just amazing. Oh, and it's amazing. Story. It's, it's breathtaking. Yeah, and and there could be a, a I, you know, if if there's a slide of, of her by the river yeah. in the website page in. on that, mm -hmm. you know, where, where you could you could link into that video, um, you know, that little piece in there, people would go back to it and find it. The uh, you know, it's a source of information. Mm -hmm. That's what it's all about. Okay. All right. You know, if somebody knows where that video is or the connection to it, uh, I've just been right. written a note. I'll call Mary and start it. Okay, and it might be online somewhere. It, it's just oh, that click. Okay. That like, okay. Um, makes it. Yeah. yeah. Makes it's an opportunity. This is an opportunity to kind of expand, push, push preservation out mm -hmm. there to the public, and and. Uh, uh, she, she might like to come to this meeting too. Yeah. Great. Um, right. So any, any other comments, uh, do spend some time on this and join us at the meeting when six where kind of the, the other players involved in this mm -hmm. uh, should all be there. And uh, I'm going to send a copy of this out to all of them. A couple of them have that right now, I think, but uh, and get their input from it also. So we have kind of a the, the following two and a half weeks to, to pull this whole thing together. So, so the 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 room is is uh, reserved, and FATV is all set up to help us with it. So. I ha I have a thought. Um, I I don't know when that. Is the city to budget the first of the year or is it done on the sixth? I mean uh, in July. I don't know. I'll find out. But if we if we could um be given some money so that we could have perhaps hire someone to create a an historic district of Prospect Street. Yes. Wouldn't that be wonderful? No, that's long over. Yes. Yeah. Um But I think some people who live up there. Um, let's let's see if we can really hit hard on that. We have a meeting the end of May, and maybe uh, as a um, an agenda item, kind of moving forward after our preservation event, to, uh -huh. um, you're really kind of putting some work into that. Okay. And and um, there there are, there's a lot of information on mass historical on how to how to um, create a um, historic district like that mm -hmm. in in your community, and it, it's an evolved process. We certainly, as a commission, would be involved in it. There would be a study committee. Yeah. And obviously, all you know the residents involved in in the decision making in this. So. Uh, it's a very positive thing. Many, many com communities have some great historic, um, district. local historic districts like and that. It connects to, to, to uh, the ones we we currently have. Yeah, and there's certainly other areas in the city uh, that uh, would be certainly eligible for things like that. Also, mm -hmm. um, we can talk about certainly Prospect Street is there. Um, Highly visible example of that. Okay, um, we have James uh, Burnell here with us, and 
What I would like to do is skip over to item number six on our agenda, which is uh, update on monument plus repairs. And um, at um, talking with uh, um, the head of DPW and James, and, and we've, we've met in the past and kind of talked about all of our our desires and, and our different roles in, in this. And James with uh, Parks and Rec has uh, joined us. And I guess um, I think our goals are all the same. And we're hoping to uh, uh, coordinate and uh, kind of come up with a united front of how uh, particularly for you know, our focus is Monument Park, and we're the we're the overseers of any change <laughs> in the Monument Park local historic district. And uh, you know, seeing over the uh, the last few decades uh, the the repair and then kind of additional deterioration from you know trees falling, et, et cetera. Um, to this important uh, downtown park area and historic park area um, of how we can uh, identify and budget the, and I think budget is a big piece of this, the, the uh, proper, uh, firstly kind of proper consultants to be hired to document the repair work necessary and secondly, the actual bidding and, and uh, repair, con construction repair happening in an appropriate, uh, uh, to meet kind of the historic standards that uh, Monument Park, which was the, our Fitchburg Civil War um, monument to the 40 some. Uh, I was Fitchburg, please don't. Yeah, and it may be more than that. I've heard higher numbers than 40 of, uh, of uh, men and certainly the nurses and probably some of them that have been involved in that conflict dedicated to them and kind of marking a a history and kind of a mid-development of our city and certainly the downtown area and it's a it's a treasure of heritage to our city right now so um maybe uh we have some ideas on on the cast iron fencing repair I think every time I look at it, I see additional balusters that are becoming deteriorated and losing their, their paint finish to them or whatever the finish is to them. Uh, certainly missing railing parts, et cetera. And, you know, it had been repaired at least once previously where uh, balusters and railings have been uh, restored in a historically proper manner. Um, the second part is is the actual monument itself, making sure that uh, uh, it's evaluated and that uh, there's no major remedial uh, or protective things that need to be done for that sculpture and the, the stone platform, et cetera, that, that it needs. We know that some of the stone steps up to the monument platform yeah. is um, are heaving and kind of moving away uh, from kind of normal frost heaves and things like that. Um, some other minor pieces of um, uh, repair, including the entry steps, the granite entry steps off of Main Street that are uh, misaligned, and um, you know things like this happen over time, and again, getting that those repaired in a historically proper way. Okay. So, um, how can we, and you know, kind of speaking briefly with the mayor, et cetera, you know, there's there's very little money in in the city's budget for certainly it hasn't been set aside or it's been used for other things over time. Understanding that um, certainly money is near and dear to everybody here in in the community, and uh, raising money is near and dear to people. But how can we? Um, What's the process, and you as a a uh, 
uh, administrator for Parks and Rec, how can we get on the list of and allocate at least funding for into the future? Um, okay. And what's the process for doing So that? I can tell you that I'll, I have some, I, what I think is very good news. Um, I know you had emailed Nick as well, so you have some information from him about grants and stuff that we can start exploring. Um, the parks and recreation budget combined make up 0.48 of 1% of the entire $158 million city budget. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Say that again. 0.48. Oh, 1%. 0.148 percent. <laughs> so money is in both budgets combined is very, very slim. Sure. Yeah. Um, so I, I do explore a lot of different grants opportunities and I know I printed some off and I have them saved in my um, file that I'll be working on applying for different things like that. Um, I know we have the bench thing that um, People, some people show like just ask questions, show interest, but no one really took the bait. Mm -hmm. um, I can tell you that cost wise. So, if you've been to Doyle Field, um, in the blue benches that you see around Doyle Field, I, I haven't been in a while, but I know um, one like it's taking. So, if they if you look around Doyle Field, the Doyle Field um, Conservation Trust mm -hmm. that manages that property, those benches people pay uh, like upwards of eight thousand dollars plus. Really? To get their name okay. put in for per bench. So the dual field commission makes about five thousand dollars per each bench that they put in. So I, I thought I honestly thought the number that I put out for the benches that we did in our thing was we were making a little money, but it was mostly to, to cover the, the cost. Yeah. Yeah. Something. yeah, it wasn't yeah. like I especially compared to what I saw other people getting for that, I was like, well. This is <laughs> yeah. So no. um, I can post that again. Um, but like I said, more I'm gonna be focused on grants and seeing what other historical pieces sure. that I can yeah. get yeah. to help fix those things. The positive news, um those casts of the feds. Yeah, we found them. Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Good. Yeah. yeah. So um during uh it was like the end of February, March. My guys were cleaning out um, the area that we have over at DPW, the park stuff, you know, trying to see basically stuff that we can get rid of or no longer needed or was broken. And they're going through and they send a picture. It said Nick and I, and I'm like, Nick, are those what I think they are? <laughs> and he's like, yep, I think they are. And I'm like, please tell, to tell them not to call right away. Don't throw those out. You need those. So they're over there. We have them. Um, so we can figure out how to take the next step with those. Great, great. So I wanted to share that. I know it's not all yeah. rainbows and sunshine, but I, I thought that was yeah. some positive news that we do have them. We know where they are, and that's something that that's great. <laughs> yeah. And you can you can mark down that um, my family's going to buy one. Okay. So my husband. Oh, okay. That's very nice. Yeah. So. Great. I don't know. I haven't seen if my flowers sprouted up yet. I haven't even. I've been so swamped with. There, there's some bad Are they? They yeah. are. They coming up. Oh, yeah. good. Yeah. I was looking. And not here yet. Go ahead. Go I was. I was hoping. I haven't like this. Trying to get it. We're just trying to get everything. Sure. You know, started up and, and going in all the. Yeah. All the leaks. The water. Stuff. Well, even because I had my guy at Monument Park checking out the water to turn on the spring, the, the irrigation system, and we need to get the whole new piece fixed, the backflow preventer, the same with the turtle, the turtle, um, the boy, yep. and the yep. turtle fountain yep. that prevented the So we've been trying to do oh, yep. all those things. Yep. And now the grass is starting to grow. So, yeah. It's just been busy, but I, I, I've been. Pumping up grants left and right, um, so I've added these to my list um, yeah. to see if I can help get. Is there what? What is the process for? Uh, like the city wants to buy a new park area, or you know, create a new baseball field, or something like that. Uh, 
you know, they, these are kind of long-term things in, in some ways. What, we're we're not involved with the day to day so if, funding and budget, budgeting process. If, city. Depending on what it'd be very difficult right now because of the 46 pieces of property that is under the parks department, there's only four guys to maintain. Mm -hmm. So if it's I could see the parks commission approving something like let's say if a piece of land that's like a wooded area or forested area. Mm -hmm. That really doesn't require yeah. a lot of maintenance, like purchasing something like that next to like cogs all or fluid, like if something yeah, like that came up. Like uh, that, I could see. Um, but uh, how do you how do you get that money from? The uh, city? There's different. There's other grant. Either I would have to make a request to the city, um, mm -hmm. and more than likely they'd probably put that money somewhere else. Uh, but there are other grants that are offered through the state and federally that to acquire, to help acquire parks. Yeah, yeah I was just trying to use that as an example of, um, you know, it, it's possible that, you know, the, just do the fencing, uh, it could be, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars, plus or minus. Uh, I, I'm just making a guess, but from our kind of yeah. last look at it and getting somebody qualified to create the the proper specifications for for a preservation work, then getting getting the the proper qualified contractors. And we have a list of preservation contractors right. that you know could probably you know probably do that and having having the the forms. Uh, certainly would help. Uh, so on the park side, if just that number of two hundred thousand dollars, that's like half of the park's budget. Yeah, but you know, it, it, saying this is this is um, let you know, and let's say we could get in grant funding for that. Let's say we could get fifty thousand dollars from some grant piece. I don't think we're. I don't think there's anywhere we can get whatever that hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollars is. We might be able to get through Mass Historical, which is kind of the one grant thing that we get over yeah. a multiple year period, is you know the top you would get fifty thousand dollars. So there we're still left with another fifty or one hundred fifty thousand dollars worth of funding that needs to make it happen. Um, let's say you wanted to buy new bleachers for the park or some recreation space. How do you, how do you, you know, if, if it's a expenditure that's, you know, this is a major park in downtown to get that added into a city budget or is that impossible? It's Obviously not impossible. things happen. There, so in the way the, so the two years, the two budget process that I've gone through, um, before I got here, the unfortunate thing so for five years, the Parks and Recreation Department budget never changed, never increased, never decreased. It just yeah. stayed the yeah. same. So for five years, so over the course of five years, like things happen, things, you know, need to be repaired, need to be fixed. Sure. And if you don't touch those things for five years, now me it's coming in, <laughs> right, now me coming in, I have to not only make up five years worth of work mm -hmm. and try to continue to move Forward and address yeah. all these things that were never addressed. Yeah. So I, I mean, in my budgets, I have put forth very large numbers to address repairs in not only Monument but several of the parks. Like I'm talking, I had to put yeah. forth like four, three fourths of a million million dollars to help start yeah. addressing playgrounds and fencing, and like a lot, like and. That's and I can put it forward and explain the situation like I've done the past two years, and yeah. then it, this is depending on what the city you know needs or prioritizes or what they have is kind of yeah. You know, uh, Nick Nick had kind of recommended that we you know as best we can kind of put this and and maybe jointly our two commissions um, the Parks Commission and ours end up jointly. Present this uh, to the mayor as a you know as a major 
um, you know, in planning, in, in financial and fiscal planning, that you know, just just so they're aware, because every you know, they're right. if we don't mention it, it's and it is on a list. I have put some according to the other list. She's asked for a list um, regarding all the parks um, mm -hmm. for like uh, capital planning purposes. Mm -hmm. So like the the pool at Coolidge has well, well hopefully three years left. <laughs> um, depending on how everything <laughs> functions underneath the ground. But yeah. so there's things like big, there's a lot of big and then play, like I said, playgrounds that have been, it's one, it's a wonderful thing to have to put playgrounds in for the people to use, but they also require maintenance. And if you don't maintain them, then sure. you know, a playground 20 years ago probably cost <laughs> yes. a quarter of what it does now. Yeah. Um, yeah. More and more rubber mats. And so, um, yeah. so there is the, there is that list and and all the pieces of I, I did share the report that you shared with me with the mayor. So she did have um, all the information from the meeting with Nick, Nick and I uh, regarding okay. you know the steps, the the monument itself, and the fencing. Um, so she has all that information. Um, that's just okay. the biggest thing. Would, would it would it um, would it help to um, and to formalize that with a request from us or kind of a joint request from Parks Commission and the Historical Commission uh, with the budget. Yeah, that's yeah, kind of a long-term budget piece, long-term, hopefully it's more immediate than that for Monument Park specific. I would say yes, not this year. Okay, because with the but the the budget that they are putting, they're going. I think it's like in two weeks. Okay, would would so usually what, what is the budget each year yearly? What is the budget process? So and usually, um, I want to say, don't hold me to the specific time frame, but I, I want to say it's either end of January or sometime in February that all the departments go submit and submit their budget to the mayor. Okay. And then the mayor takes that and meets with her finance team to come up with her budget of what the city, what they feel the city can, mm -hmm. you know, handle and priorities. And then I, it's either the first or second week of May. It goes before city council, like they have those special budget meetings. Yeah. Some of it CBDG grants. <laughs> and CBD, well, CBDG happens beforehand, which is something that we probably could address to possibly fix a part of the fence because they don't give a huge, I mean, it's usually like around a million dollars or so in CBDG funding. That's goes. <laughs> it's spread out. Right, so far. in CBDG funding last, this for this upcoming fiscal year, um, the Parks Department is receiving, it's either 20, no, 34 or $37,000. Um, so not, not a lot. Um, and then last year, I, I think I got like 85, give or take, maybe somewhere in, in there mm -hmm. to do a various bunch of different projects. So, but that's something that I can switch because the projects that I have are, they're not huge, but I can definitely write a request for a project to get them. Both, like around, like, I would say like twenty thousand dollars. So I know it might not go that far, but mm -hmm. With that so, so kind of time frame for us to have this in on a timely basis, not too early. No, not too early. I, yeah, right. So I would say like if we were to, to put something together like November, November, absolutely, and then just then we would have it because then too I, I could probably have a good idea of what um, after I apply and see um, grant wise. Too as well, like and, and we can include that to show like we have. This is what we're hoping to get accomplished. Um, we are applying for these grants in X amount of money. Um, mm -hmm. We're requesting these grants. We're looking for the city support of X amount of dollars. So at least we'll have. If if, if um, some of these things that they need. I got it. Oh, no problem. If they need, um, like if you were doing a building, you'd have to have design work 
done ahead of time. So there's kind of design fees, then there's yeah. the actual construction. Right. Um, my my thought is that the the fencing, as as it was done in two thousand three, had a professional uh, preservation. And that was firm. was that the person who made the the cast? Made the no, they made the original documents and the specifications saying the cast iron has to meet this specification. It has to meet these profiles. Uh, these this is the these are the individual pieces that actually needed need to be replaced this piece of rail yeah. this baluster this finial on, on this mm -hmm. post and there's a there's a, a drawing mm -hmm. and then there's you know a 30 40 page specifications of you know qualification qualifications of the contractors what insurance they need kind of all the right. general conditions and then what's the cast iron made of What's the paint going to be on it? You know, exactly how they're fastened and then it's stainless steel fasteners or welding or whatever these things are as they do it. So it's somebody that's worked with historic cast iron just to make sure we don't end up with something that's made with plastic or, you know, or somebody that's never done this or doesn't know how to work with an antique materials, essentially. It's kind of coming from our historic preservation part of it. Uh, so there might be want a design fee for that work. Right. And probably, you know, again, there would have to be some consult and the second project is looking at the actual statue and that might not be it. And some grants do cover the cost of, um, mm -hmm. or help offset the cost of, of a consultation the design work. Or, or the design work. Yeah. Um, in that, and it might be something where we look at like the, the mass um, state where that can be like a yearly thing where one year we do get, you know, maybe enough funding to cover the analysis and design of that. And then knowing, I mean, then just getting the documents idea. are made then the next year. You right. Get, and then next year. Okay. So now we know it might, I mean, our so year to year we can with, yeah, change in price, but at least we have a general like ballpark idea of what yeah. that might be. So the designer or engineer or whoever right. does it says, yeah, I think it's going to be in this cost range. Right. So then, you know, uh, you allocate like the library. Well, the city has to allocate so many millions of dollars for the that particular building renovation, and it'd be the same thing for this. So. Okay, so, um, so that's all I got. So time time frame is like get all the stuff together by like November. Yeah, absolutely. And I would say I'd have a really good idea too of what I can find grant wise and when things are, are due. Yeah. And you have my information too. Yeah. Yeah. In between there, I know summer gets extremely busy um, on the rec department side and on the park side. Um, but I'm, I'm definitely still a little bit as then when September rolls around it kind of, we go from being like up here to then just take an immediate sure. drop off. Yeah. So yeah. Is that sound like a feasible? Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah way to do it just so we're you know, we keep having this on our agenda and we, yeah no no no, we no. Don't know how to make action <laughs> what I think that's a I think that's a good plan and then you know hope maybe by next year too that things might take a swing if for uh, you know better wise and this yeah. game maybe have more yeah. funding and yeah. the city may have more funding and yeah and this is this is definitely a uh yeah, we're, we're, we are we're kind of we're partnered with people that actually get the stuff done, which is the parks and the, the city commission. We've been appointed to you know, oversee any any repairs or design changes that happen. The library, the armory, right. the courthouse, the, the Christ Church, and things like that. So it's kind of a an in, interesting thing. So. Definitely, um, I say we get back to you in the yeah, fall, and uh, we have the summer to kind of think about uh, how we put this together. And uh, again, we maybe you know, through you and and your commissioners, sometimes we have kind of this this um, feasible way of approaching this particular one park in the time. Yeah, the city. no, not a problem. Great. So thank you very much for having me. Oh, thank you for sharing your insights. Could I ask about the no dogs prohibited sign? Can you take them down? Everybody's taking them down.
Is it okay if Don takes his yeah. uh, is it okay socket yeah, wrench up there? Yeah. <laughs> no, you don't, don't take them down. They'll be down <laughs> tomorrow, if not Monday. <laughs> we'll, we'll try to bail you out. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I had a, a teacher who, who said, uh, if you get arrested, uh, I'll bail you out, but don't call me until the morning. <laughs> you don't call me at night because I sleep. I don't get up in the middle of the night. Have to spend the night in here. Don't take it off in the evening. Take it off in the morning. <laughs> James, when you mentioned that 0.48 percent, was that DBW and parks? No, that's just that's just so that's parks and recreation. The recreation okay. side is probably about like. 240 something and the park side is about 500 in something yeah so you said yeah so it's like 700 something between the two <laughs> yeah. yeah well you do great work with yeah. with little money so we appreciate that good job of that. <laughs> so we try i mean I, I i i honestly i do like the past i want to say from the last week of march so excluding this week, there was I was applying, there was a grant due every week, and I got I I got everyone in that I that I could. I have like a lull this week, and then there's like another three weeks in a row with three other ones. Yeah, wonderful. So I I, I honestly I, I I try my best to get the city as much as funding as possible because I want I want to see especially the parts that I'm in for charge of yeah. thrive. Great job, thank so, you. And please feel free to reach out anytime. Okay. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. Thank you. Bye, Jim. All right. Any? So, any... I, I, I just, I get so sad. <laughs> you know, just talking about how little these people have to work. You know, to be able to carry out their work and insufficient funding. Yeah. Well, I I think I I think I told you the last at the last meeting that um, uh, I think seventy almost eighty percent of the budget is supported by residences at seventy something, and the rest is business. So one of the thoughts I had is you know. Um, addressing economic development, I and mean, we have an economic development director, but there is such a need. Yeah, as 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 we're trying to point out in the the May program is that um, reservation nearly always means a. Um, a stabilization and a increase in property values, uh, and we we hope to kind of uh, help reinforce this with our program and hopefully other things that we're we're doing. This is kind of just a little splash, but um, I think that that and, and by increasing property values, uh, the the real estate taxes, you know, people have more money to. In their businesses are, are working and the, the properties are valuable, uh, they'd be happy to pay the increase in the value of their property as 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 the little mills of uh, property tax that kind of go on to that. And the city has more funds to uh, give back to the community, such as repair of their parks. And, and, uh, yeah, and, and this isn't just a theoretical, hypothetical. There are so many other towns and communities that have already done this. Yeah. 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 Not just Massachusetts, but oh, I know. Yeah. Old mill towns. Yeah. So it, it it's you know it's it's which comes first and I think we well it kind of all work together because certainly uh in in a great old mill town like this uh the heritage is here um and the, the potential for um, reaping on that and, and being able to uh, uh, collectively 
uh, increase the value of individual property owners. And I don't know how to get rid of them other than yeah. competing over and over yeah. again. And, and that's true. And it's a hard thing to do. And as James saying, you know, they don't have the money. Yeah, so, you know, which comes first. You know. <laughs> yeah. um, and, you know, so we're, we, we hope to push on that, to help push on that anyhow. Um, so, and moving, um, I say we, we started getting our understanding of grants and ideas of what some of the costs are going to be and, and focusing on this uh, during the summer and really starting to act on it uh, in early fall and, and getting the, you know, um, the budgetary pieces and, and defining it as much as we can for mining at park uh, and uh, coordinating that with James and the, and the Parks Commission as they I presume that they're involved in their budget submissions on that. And uh, looking at the historic properties grants and things like that mm -hmm. that might be applicable to this. And there's, there's, a, there's a few out there. And see if we would qualify for those and how that becomes part of the uh, process moving forward. You know, we've been standing still for years and hopefully we get somewhere in sight that we have some repairs done in well, two or three years. It's it's hard it, it's hard to you know to continue to try to sell something to the people who you know make decisions about how money is going to be spent. And you just you get tired. Yeah. You know, I mean I I remember I probably if I've said this I'm I'm sorry, but when I announced that we were going to do it um a painting downtown, I had called some people, you know, asking me, well, what could anybody paint downtown? <laughs> and it was it was amazing, you know. Um, what what they painted, and I you're gonna laugh at me, but I I Are like yeah, <laughs> I like to look for um, the medallions of things that are on buildings, mm -hmm. and this uh, I haven't been to the um, Modern Square Dining for ages, but I used to look over at the Syndicate Building, which was on the corner of. Uh, Sway Passway and Main Street, and the medallions are beautiful there. And I was thinking that, and there's a lot of others too, that somebody could design jewelry, you know, mm. jewelry taking taking the designs. They, I mean, they're they're beautiful. Yes. Yeah, and we can't replicate that stuff. Not our new buildings as easily as the old ones. Yeah. All right. Um, moving back to item number five, uh, um, uh, project to document and share Main Street building histories, historic districts, tax credits, uh, et cetera. And we're working with the Historical Society a little bit with that. I don't know, Andy, do you have any, any updates or anything that? Uh, um, yeah. Taking some photos of buildings mm -hmm. around the street area and surrounding area. And I've, I've been on Macris and I've been downloading like PDF files of, okay. of the history of the building. So I have the individual mm -hmm. histories ready to go. Um, these are, you know, I've emailed out some of it. And then uh, most of it's going to be stored in the historical moment, server there for now. Yeah. yeah. If, if um, maybe next meeting, the end of May, you can give us a little visual of what some of that stuff looks like, everybody. Sure. Yeah. Well, and and I I I feel bad because I was going to get it to you. I I have a carousel of of, of the um, downtown talks uh, that I used to get, and it has uh, some nice images on there. Hmm? Nice images on. 
slides, yeah? I think so. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 All right. Um, that'll be great. Um, number seven, update on historic building demolition delay. Yeah, the uh, is again so struggling with where I wrote up last time uh, or that issue. And I, and I looked at the Maynard list of historically significant buildings. It is historical commission. And it, and it says National Register of Historic Places, Historic Resources Inventory Macris. And then Maynard Commission voters will include on list. And I was thinking, you know, we can't really do that here. I mean, it, it, there are so many buildings, um, and we don't even have a big census of those buildings. Uh, uh, and so to go one by one, all the buildings, if you have a smaller town, uh -huh. it's feasible. But for a place like Fishburg to go house by house or building by building and put it on the list. Yeah, how, how about just doing the buildings that um, support the various districts and they don't be Main Street? You know, the buildings that are well, like the H. and Francis buildings and then the, the ones for um, the areas more in square buildings. Those would all be on the macros list too. So yeah, yeah. but I mean, just uh, do that as a start. I mean, list them as a start. You know, we should be. I don't know. Mm. Mm -hmm. the, the doc got we got from Jen Darby. Seen that demolition delay communities? Oh, yeah, I have that one. I already got one. Yeah, I have that one. Oh, well, it's part of it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Documents. Mean, Resources. Yeah. Yeah, the. Uh, I see they go from six months to 18 months. And I don't know what those <laughs> time frames are based on. Um, you know who the building's um, commissioner is here in Pittsburgh? No. The change? The no, it's it there. was Mark, wasn't it Mark? Uh, but then, is he still here? Were you, wasn't it the fellow that he here named Mark who talked to us? Was, was he with Jim? No. <laughs> There's a new building commissioner. Yeah. So Mark left. Yes, Mark left. Okay. So do we know who this is? Uh, yes. Felix. Um, I can't think of his name. He sent you some emails. This yes. Is name on the emails. Um, it, would, it would be good to introduce ourselves to him. We've been here for a few months now. And, uh, um, Introducing to our thoughts on the on the uh, on the proposed uh, ordinance. Yeah. He sent out emails about the library project. Yes, and the floodplain. Yes, yeah. And whether the library's in the floodplain or not, or not. Okay, right. Which to me, I thought it was odd. It was taken out by somebody. Yeah, I, I, I've also um, and, the, and there's kind of a question on. Well, it's interpreted as a historic district, and it's in the not in the national district. Although this new upper common district, if it ever goes through, it will be in a national register <laughs> district. But it's in our local historic district, and it isn't individually listed in the local historic district. Um, it's just a map that includes all the buildings in it, and. Um, to create a, uh, and maybe, maybe that ordinance in creating districts 
there isn't an opportunity to list buildings individually in it or create, or at least when this was done in 1975, it wasn't, but there was a historic district study committee yeah. that had a full report on, on the district boundaries mm -hmm. and all of the district buildings in it. And, and that was the process. You had a, a study committee, like if we wanted to make another district here in the city, um, like you mentioned, Park Prospect Street or whatever, there would be a historic district study committee. Mm -hmm. Uh, it would probably be our commission here, but we would have to go through that process, and there's a whole list of things that you kind of go through. And in that, I would think in that report from the district committee, it would list the individual buildings in it. So I have a request to the city clerk's office to see if we can get a copy of that 1974, whatever it is, uh, study committee. To see, yeah, if, uh, certain to see if uh you know how if the buildings were actually individually listed or not in there. So there's some semantics involved and you know districts are can be local districts are different than a national register district and how their the buildings are listed. So there might be some some interpretations there that um well, they, they, we might be able to offer. In that. There was, um, you know, interest, or I should say, being promoted the fact that every level of government was, you know, was included, in, you know, as the owner of the buildings. You know. mm -hmm. We had we had county government, government at the time, yeah. and the state and city. Yeah, that's a unique area. It, this just for our own viewing and. And for any public that's watching this, this is the this is a map of Fitchburg and the, what is called the Macris list, M A C R I S dot net. Um, macris dot M A C dash M A C R I S dot net. Anyhow, th this represents the survey of buildings, and what Don's comment was. You know, there's a lot more buildings in the city than just shown by the blue dots mm -hmm. on this particular map. And um, should a a kind of preservation of or historic resources through a uh, an ordinance that that could uh, propose a demolition delay, you know, what other buildings that are have not been surveyed should be included in this? Or, you know, other options could be that um, do we want to create a, for timeliness, do we want to create a, an ordinance that at least covers those listed in the inventory areas at a specific uh, waiting period or delay period? And through amendments to the ordinance in the future, be able to, uh, because we've been talking about this for a number of years, okay. that we we move on a you know, on a well defined what we have in our resources at the moment, not being able to describe what those others are, unless we go by a, um, a assessor if you're built, you know, 50 years old, 100 years old, whatever, we could go by this list and get an ordinance on the books and then amend the ordinance if we felt it wasn't working. That's another approach to it. That's another. Or we go with the, the 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 year, and then sift through the ones that you know demolition permits. And if it's fifty years, you know. yeah, Maynard says it doesn't do the year. Um, for most bylaws, with space, not age of building. And we don't 
I mean, is the mattress worse? Do we know how that's compiled? Mm -hmm. How the decision is How it gets to that? Do we include it or not include it? See, what I'm thinking, again, going back to what I wrote last time, is if we turn it, reverse it, instead of our trying to decide, well, should this fill me, which, you know, if, if, if one does say 50 years, well, how do you know that you're not just throwing a building that you, you know, that's within the 50 year, you know, mm -hmm. closer to us right. to the present, yeah. mm -hmm. that we later find out is of historic significance, mm -hmm. like the birthplace of a present, future present, I mean, right. something like right. that. Right. And so uh, what I'm thinking is reversing this, Kind of uh, like Springfield, which which is to require a uh, a waiver uh, from the person who wants to demolish a building that it, it is not a historic significance. So it's not up to us to prove the historic significance. Uh -huh. It's up to them to prove that it's not a it historic is, significance. I see what you're saying. Uh, or make the case why it's not stories. That still doesn't prevent the destruction of a building where a future president is born, but uh, yeah, that we don't know. <laughs> um, but it could be have any other bullet points. No, it's just those three stuff. Too. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'll uh, think that too. Um, to uh, can we continue this discussion, would it be worthwhile to uh, uh, invite our new building commissioner to this? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, one, send him our current copy of yeah, the draft. The previous one, Mark said, well, he's, he's not in a position to decide whether a building is historically significant or not. Um, Whereas, remember 10 years ago, the guy who was a building commissioner says he was, therefore we didn't need a demolition delay because he could decide whether the building was historically Oh, I forgot about that. Yes. So, more than 10 years ago. <laughs> Maybe not. Yeah. Okay. Um, just. Um, yeah, and then. It's important to have a building commissioner on board. Yes. Uh, or it's, as uh, it, it's a strong, uh, it's a strong voice um, in how it works. And then certainly the mayor and council even uh, educated on that. But I think starting with the building commissioner kind of and, and um, other agencies in the city being able to endorse it for its, its value. And I think that's that's kind of what we're trying to change the tone with this is to make people profess, yes, that is true. And we can then kind of work from there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah good to hear what the new commissioner's thoughts are. Yes. No. Whether he can decide or not decide. <laughs> yeah. Um, All right, is interesting. We we can we can try that for uh, May or June or something. And sure. Okay. And I will try to uh, I, I, I will. You um, can have that. I'll send you. I'll, I'll try to make a point uh, to make a uh, beforehand meeting with him just to kind of introduce us to him and then invite him to a meeting. Okay. And um, just so it's not kind of a cold call type of thing in the middle of it. Um, what is this commission? Okay. The, uh, all right. Okay. Anything else, General Delay Plastics? Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, moving on, update appreciation of uh, stone walls, stone structures. One thought is in, in the program with certainly slides of our, our city heritage, maybe throwing some stone walls, uh, field stone and quarry in some of the slides show stuff in the program. I'm, I'm getting my my personal revelation that Pittsburgh is so unique with its with its retaining walls. Uh, in almost all the cities in Massachusetts, that that it's uh, it's early gifts. It, it it's part of the visual character of our city. Well, we should we should have a wonderful picture of High Street. Yeah. The High Street right behind the stables. stables. Yeah. 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 So a little exciting time. Yeah, and then to muddy the water some more. Uh, in, in some, when he says, a town in some historic traditions and towns um, have a heritage tree ordinance. Oh. So these are significant trees that. Cannot be replaced. They're part of the history of the town. Uh -huh. uh, protected uh, from being chopped down, basically, yeah. that, that otherwise would not be protected mm -hmm. by uh, change free ordinances. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, <clears throat> there, there was a, an article on Earth Day in the New York Times about the need to restore urban forests. And one of the things he pointed out is people chop down trees for nonsensical reasons. You know, like, oh, I don't want to break up the leaves. Yeah. <laughs> you know, or getting in the way of my view, you know. <laughs> and this is about a time Temperatures are rising. Uh, the trees help Nashville, for example, uh -huh. which the cause of the world fades. They have a tree ordinance. And because they found that the difference in degrees was as much as nine degrees in those parts of Nashville that don't have trees from those that do have trees. Now, with a, in a summer, where you're having temperatures since the 90s reaching into the 100s. Nine degrees is significant. That's a significant difference. Oh, but, you know, Arlington Street, if Arlington Street used to have not a lot of trees, but it, it, it was tree line. Yeah, it was tree line. They're all gone. It's Bleak Street. Chopped down either by residents. Uh, or by uh, units yeah. I just not, you know, I just did walking around the city, I mean, the urban block areas, and you see the remains of, of street trees, mm -hmm. you know, with metal grates and stuff around them. You know, they were this high that they got out right there. Um, and and then and again, this is this is um, how we can uh, maybe out of our purview, but it it's so important, like you're saying, to the, the livability of, of our communities and the temperatures and stuff. It is a cost piece. They're city trees, um, like after the ice storm of 2009. Yeah. Um, you know, there, there's still trees here in, in, in the city that haven't been pruned back from the damage in those, or, you know, and it costs money to do that. And you know, who's doing that? And, you know, it's part of the, part of the DPW department's budget. And, you know, if you don't have the money, these things kind of go away. Um, but they are such an important part of our, you know, visual in, in, 
kind of taking one down, you don't think much about it, but you know, collectively, it makes such a big difference. Yes. Uh, um, so it's short-term heritage of the life of the tree. <laughs> um, Sorry. Yes. No, it, it, these are all... It's a down. Yeah. <laughs> important thing. Um, we move on to... When should you write out now? Uh, item number nine. Um, no further action on that at the moment. Although, I think after we get through our May event, I'd like to concentrate on that again in, in uh, June and July um, and get back to the designers. It actually, the, the, uh, it's in the construction documents, and I believe the construction on the, the, the final phase of the rail trail will be starting in the summer. Which will be the bridge and final rail stuff coming, or ramp things coming down to uh, the Main train station area. Mm -hmm. um, have you seen? Have you seen plans showing that? Yes. Yeah. Um, I have some on my computer that I can bring them up maybe after I'm reading okay. just to see those. Um, So it, I'd like to defer that to all after our May activities. And I think we still have time to get those designs in. And they, they purchased the signs in the contract or the design contract. And just the graphics is wow. is what we have uh, interest to. So, and that can happen because the signs will be up for another year or so, my understanding. Uh, number 10, historic marker update. Um, there have been no new applications this month. So I think we are good on that. Commission membership vacancy update. Um, I've made an outreach looking for a realtor again and uh, um, waiting for some feedback on that, but haven't heard anything yet. So. Um, let me know if you have any thoughts or suggestions coming through. So, um, number two, you haven't heard anything first. No. Um, that we could maybe make a call or something on that. Be good. Um, so if we need to keep looking, that would be good. We, we would know where we stand on that. So. Uh, number 12, um, this is website additions. Uh, we covered some of that in our program notes, and those I want to have on the website before the program begins. And since I was kind of waiting to see if we had any new members to put on the website update, I did that. So uh, I think I'll go ahead and get these other things posted on there. The access to the preservation briefs and the uh, preservation directory things, and we'll add those to the website. Uh, I'll, I'll start on that next week. Uh, any new business? And our next meeting, uh, which will be probably a quorum of our members, uh, will be May 23rd, mm -hmm. uh, the Celebrate Pittsburgh's Historic Preservation Event at the Legislative Building. Um, and that's at 4 p.m. and public's invited. And our next um, commission meeting, uh, going over our regular business, will be 3 p.m. May 30th, uh, 2024. The celebrate meeting to be considered an official meeting for us. Well, um, no, that's a good. That's a. I, I think if we have a quorum of members presenting or um, being involved in it, it may be official. I'll post it as such. 
um, which is good advertisement for it also, so people get those automatic postings and maybe they might show up and be aware of it too. So, um, that's one way of breaking the open meeting. <laughs> so, rather be uh, safe than sorry. And have a good May. Uh, one thing um, to note is that the in May following our, our 23rd meeting on the 25th, the uh, quarry or the Rollstone Quarry Walk is scheduled for Saturday the 25th. And you can look on their website for up, updates on it. So it's the uh, the Rock Walk, I believe, is the official name of it. And uh, certainly an important heritage uh, on the bend. So I think on uh, Sunday, May 26th at Monument Park is a program to honor what's an honorary event. To a memorial day. A memorial day. Right. day. Um, right. Sally Craig and I believe was leading that. So that would be the 26th? Yeah, it's like 6 p.m. at the park. Good. That's on Sunday? Sunday, May 26th. Okay. And the next day is Memorial Day officially, I think. Probably. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if the city has any. Is the 26th, you said it was a Monday? Sorry. Should be a Sunday. A Sunday, yeah. Saturday is the Rock Walk. It's 23rd to Tuesday, right? From the program. <laughs> Thursday, Thursday, oh, Thursday. Yep. Yeah. In our, in our next planning meeting for that event is on the 6th of May, which is Monday. Yeah, you don't want to Welcome to join that. And no patients. Post that on our Okay, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Thank you very much. This is the end of the historical commission meeting. Thank you.